You can see you're going to want to maybe come here because we can't bring all of these samples to you. We have a few that are pretty common, pretty popular, like Black Star. This hasn't been washed yet. It's a much darker color after it's washed. Um, this one is a real economical decision. A lot of people go with that. Um, and then the Arizona has a more colorful decision. This can kind of give you a little better idea of what it would look like as it's spread out rather than just looking at a little box full of rocks. This is your granite. This is your uh, pea gravel, which is really, really small and leaves too many impressions, really, when you walk on it and gets spilled in the yard easily. This is your wash river gravel, which is the cheapest, most economical xeriscape. This is your um, inch and a half um, Arizona and then Black Star. Black Star is very, very up and coming kind of contemporary look. It's, you know, it goes with the pastel grays and all that of the kind of common um, landscapes that we're seeing. This is the same as that. That's your Arizona, but it's inch and a half to three inch, and that's marble. Go from six inch to 12 inch Arizona, you get a much bolder look. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's three inch to eight inch. Um, but you can see that's not really accurate. This rock is easily 12 inches, and there's not a whole lot of them in here that are three inches. So it's, they, uh, you know, it's gonna vary on what you get by the truck. This is gonna give you a much bolder look but it's gonna be more expensive because you're gonna wanna line it with smaller rocks so that there's no cracks seen um, and then put the bigger rocks in and they're not gonna cover as much square footage. So that's gonna be a much more expensive deal. Black Star looks really nice against brown edging and stone. Looks really good with the, with the green. Makes kind of the, these colors pop really well to have more of a, a matte background. Um, then the plants pop really well and look nice. Granite is obviously super common in this area. Normally we're using crushed granite, which would be like quarter inch to three eighths. This is a larger size. This is three eighths to half inch. So it doesn't, it's not as sandy and it, it stays put when you, when you walk on it. Economical river gravel. And then these are the bigger black star chunks, which again, is gonna give more of a bold look. New Mexico, Arizona kind of desert, more bold look, but their jagged edges kind of give it a little more texture when you're further back. This is an older style, not super common. Colorado. More Arizona. And then of course, red mulch, black mulch. Same thing I thought I might just point out, you know, you get ants or you get clippings from your plants in your larger aggregates not 100% maintenance free. You, know, you really have to get in here with a backpack blower and blow all this out of the cracks. So I like to point that out before someone spends a lot of money on a, on a Xeriscape um, that you know they're kind of advertised as maintenance free and they're not. They're just, I would say they're less maintenance than mulch. Accent, certain points of the, you know, this bed is fairly large spanning the whole front of the house. So if you want to kind of add more 3D options to it you can get some boulders to kind of accent it so like this would go well with black star it would kind of match a little bit if you were using granite you could use big chunks of granite now these accent pieces obviously are going to really run the cost up because they're sold by weight and it's heavy um, i believe none of these are going to have price tags on it because they're going to have to weigh them so they're going to give you a roundabout range or you can set you can come down here and say hey this is the one i want can you go weigh it more accents here um, different colors of boulders to kind of place around the bed and kind of give it a little bit when a when a, a display or a landscape starts to get too wide then it's hard to show 3d texture to it without adding something of height and of course boulders are not a terrible idea versus plants or to have a mix of both because these are maintenance free any plant it could die or needs to be trimmed or needs to be watered whatever but you know this kind of goes with the zero escape look some more and then some Colorado so really like whatever we get in the rock for the Xeriscape we can get the same type for a boulder accent or we can we can really contrast it so like if you want to do black star which is like a gray base and you put limestone on it we'd have a more of a contrast black leaf ligustrum is a nice dark backdrop and they have I little tiny awesome white kind of baby breath flowers very landscapes. briefly in the um, spring it does but that's a great option for like own, a but it's lime hardy and you're wanting to grow green. a nice dark hedge out of Plumbago is an awesome shade flower. There's not a lot of things that we've had luck with getting to flower in a really shaded area. Most flowering plants like the sun, but Plumbago is kind of a nice shaded flower. Grasses are awesome. 
Um, for the Texas, the low water requirement, they give it a kind of a wispy look, but you just need to be really aware of the maintenance. When you go to trim it, it's really hard to gather up all that grass in a zero escape. Your succulents and your cactuses and your very low maintenance desert type plants are the ones that are going to go best in an aggregate or a zero escape in order to keep it more maintenance free because there's not going to be a lot of trimming to disturb the rock or to, to leave things behind. So, you know, you're, you got red yucca and white yucca um, and twist leaf yucca and cactuses, like those types of things really go best in a zero escape. This is the style that you're looking for when you think of a zero escape. So you have ones that are spineless that are great. I really recommend these if you're going to do any kind of a cactus. If we're looking for shade tolerant plants, uh, we get a lower selection, but these are a great option to just pour them. Obviously ferns love the shade and they're nice accent, but they're not going to give you any real enjoyment in the winter. Peddlums are awesome. I really love them if we have partial shade. It's hard to keep them this dark purple maroon color. Um, of course, the blooms are every spring. Really cool looking plant. But you got to keep them fertilized and keep them wet in order to keep the, them dark. The drier they get, the more green they're going to turn. And then they start losing leaves in a, in a drought in there. So they're not only green, but um, less and less leaves. So these you got to keep in partial shade or keep them well watered and well fertilized with color star talking about rosemary we've got the trailing and the upright and i believe this is the only one with the flowers and of course it's going to trail uh, all over so it kind of does nice on a retaining wall when you want something to kind of waterfall over the retaining wall um, but uh, upright is you know a little bit more of a bush style and if these get super large and you hack them way back they will not recover so just uh, note on that can see the underside of a rosemary bush um, will not recover if you were to cut it way back in here. So you got to keep it the size you want it. I really like sage, especially when we're trying to get some contrast out of a dark mulch bed or somewhere where we've got Burford hollies and we've got a lot of dark colors and we want to offset it, contrast it with some lighter ones. These are low water requirement. They're easy to trim. Um, it's good to stay with something somewhat native so that we're not having to have such a hard time keeping it alive. These are kind of bee happy. We find a lot of wasp nests when we're trimming these and they're a little dense. So I believe they attract mice a little bit more because they can hide in there. Um, but they're great for sculpting. If you want to sculpt Mickey Mouse or really flat top square edge shrub, you know, these, and the smaller the leaf, the more we can manicure it. The larger the leaf, like these Indian hawthorns, the less we can manicure it. It's going to give you a more natural look. These are real, real fluffy, you know, kind of a nice fluffy um, Japanese boxwood. So they, they give it a real nice hedge. They got light green when they're new growth and dark green when it's not new growth. These are tried and true sages. They grow really well in Texas. We can make Mickey Mouse out of them, but they are a little bit leggy, a little bit thin. Your Burford hollies are great option for just like a, a dense hedge. Red tip fatinias are great until they're not. I, I think they have like a lifespan of somewhere around somewhere around 15 to 20 years some people get more out of them but they they just seem to kind of grow old and then get disease or, or fall over dead so if you're doing a hedge out of these and you see like patches where one or two have been replaced that's why i don't, I don't really recommend them except for a really low budget hedge maybe in an area that's not as important wax leaf ligustrum is a nice dark backdrop and they have little tiny white kind of baby's breath flowers very briefly in the spring but that's a great option for like a fence line or something that you're wanting to grow a nice dark hedge out of this is your bang for buck aisle it is 15 gallon i think that's the sweet spot for getting the bang for your buck and of course remember everything's going to get shorter when we put it in the ground so this looks like they're seven foot tall they're really going to be you know six foot tall or under crepe myrtles wax myrtles bradford pears red buds and this is the aisle if you're looking for something specific where you really need to make up for some trunk that was displaced in a construction site really not as much bang for your buck here delivery is going to be more the tree is going to be more and the labor is going to be more 